Good evening and welcome to the September 26th meeting of the Murfreesboro City School Board. <coughs> those of you that are here with us tonight, we're glad to have you. And those of you that are watching from home, we're glad to have you as well. Sure. At this time, I'm going to ask you to please stand as we have two gentlemen, Mr. Ryan Prettyman, a sixth grader from Cason Lane, and also Jalen Morgan, a fifth grader from Bradley Academy, to lead us in our pledge, followed then by a moment of silence. Gentlemen. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I'm on the south. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Ms. Baker. Okay, the first item on your agenda tonight is election of the board chair and vice chair for the 2017-2018 um, school term. And according to board policy 1.200 and according to state statute, Tennessee Code Annotated Section 49-2-202C2 and Section 25-6 of the Murfreesboro City Code, board officers are to be elected annually. The state statute mandates that the board only elect a board chair. However, board policy 1.200 mandates that board, the board also elect a vice chair. The term for the officers to be elected will be from November 1st of 2017 to October 31st of 2018. And nominations for board chair will be given followed by a roll call for votes. And then nominations will be taken for vice chair with a roll call to, vo to vote. A majority of the entire board, not just those present, which means four votes, is necessary for one to be voted into office, according to state statute. And board officers cannot be elected by acclamation, so we will have to ask each of you to designate your preference. Now, after the nominations have been made and seconded, I will call your name and you should state the name of the nominee you are voting for. And please remember that it does take four votes for a member to be elected. So first, I will call for nominations for the um, board chair. Yes. I nominate Mr. Butch Campbell. Okay. Second. Are there any other nominations? Okay, seeing none, I will um, start at the roll call vote. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Campbell. Um, Mr. Barrett. Campbell. Um, Mr. Campbell. Campbell. Mr. King. Campbell. Um, Ms. Rainier. Mr. Campbell. Mr. Settles. Mr. Campbell. And Ms. Smith. Mr. Campbell. All right. Now I will take um, nominations for the vice chair. Yes. I'd like to nominate Nancy Rainier. Okay. I'll second. second. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Okay, seeing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Um, Mr. Ballard? Ms. Rainier. Mr. Barrett? Ms. Rainier. Mr. Campbell? Ms. Rainier. Mr. King? Ms. Rainier. Ms. Rainier? Ms. Rainier. <laughs> Mr. Settles? Ms. Rainier. And Ms. Smith? Ms. Rainier. Then your board chair and vice chair are Mr. Campbell and Ms. Rainier for the next school term. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank thank you. you very much for the honor. I appreciate it and we'll work with all of you as we will continue to do the best we can for the students and the employees of Mercer City Schools. Yes, thank you. I agree. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. You have the agenda in front of you and you have seen it the last two or three days. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? 
Move to approve. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you very much. Communications? Yes, Lisa. And as she's coming uh, to the podium, I'd like to let the public that's watching know how well this board works together. And I truly appreciate the leadership of Mr. Campbell and Ms. Rainier, and I also appreciate the camaraderie, but also the fact that you look into things and you figure out what's right for the children. And I think there are a few school boards in the state that do that, so thank you very much. Mitchell Nielsen School would like to thank Ginger and Danny DeMumbrium and the Sinking Creek Farms Bike Club for the generous <laughs> donation of $500 to their field trip fund. Also, congratulations to our following school board members who are recognized at the Tennessee School Boards Association Fall District Meeting. Mr. Phil King was awarded Level 1, and Ms. Nancy Rainier and Mr. Jared Barrett were awarded Level 4 Boardsmanship Awards. Congratulations to you guys for making these accomplishments. Um, Congratulations to Kayla Mullen at Discovery School, who has been invited to present about twice exceptional children at the 2E Center's Bridges Conference in California next month. So that's quite an honor for her, as well as for our school district to be represented there. Also want to take time to thank the board members uh, and the community who came out last Friday and read to our students. We had a lot, of a lot of parents, a lot of community members reading to our kids, and I know they truly appreciate it. Uh, while I'm on that subject, I want to follow up really quick. We will be presenting uh, the Red Cross with a check uh, this Friday for just over $6,600, and that was from our Children's Hope for Houston fundraiser that they did two weeks ago. That's great. How much did you say? It's a little bit over $6,600. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. great. Really mm -hmm. good. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Another example of the caring community. Absolutely. And particularly children. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. All right. Consent items? Mr. I, have, I just had a quick question. For the fees on Lucky Lad Farms, I noticed there's discrepancies between the three. It seems like the same thing, but one said $10, one said $10.75, one said $12. If it's the same thing, why are we getting charged different amounts? I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I just wanted to hear it before we. The reason reason is if there's more students going in one versus another you have to split the cost okay. for a bus transportation they're charging us <coughs> the only time I have a difference if, if I think if the students are getting something when they're there but in this case I think it's just transportation differences right. thanks I make a motion to approve thank you Ms. Barrett makes a motion to approve do I have a second second thank you Mr. Settles any question discussion all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. Any opposition? <coughs> and there is none. Thank you. Next item. Your, your next items are your board policies, and uh, I'm going to turn this over to Ralph and to Kelly. Uh, Ms. Kelly, do you have the information on political activities 5.606? Yes. Um, last time I was asked if there were any um, laws relative to uh, employees of a school system campaigning for elected officials, and there is state statute 2-19-206 um, and section D2 specifically states that it is unlawful for any teacher to display campaign literature, banners, placards, streamers, stickers, signs, or other items of campaign or political advertising on behalf of any party, committee, or agency, or candidate for a partisan or nonpartisan public office elected by the people on the premises of any building or land owned by a local education agency. So they cannot campaign on school property or utilizing school property such as the computer system or the mail system. Um, however, there is an exception under this statute that says that it shall not be construed to prohibit a teacher from displaying a decal or bump bumper sticker on the teacher's personal vehicle while parked on school property. 
So the decals and bumper stickers are allowed on their personal vehicle while they're parked on school property, but other campaigning utilizing school property is not allowed. Ms. Smith and then Ms. Rainier. Okay, so th that clears up we were talking about, except there's more signage now available than bumper stickers, but I think that. It says decal or bumper sticker. Decal okay. or bumper sticker. So a decal to me is a different thing. Okay, so I'm not, mine is not pulling out, but I had written down line six, employees shall not use audio or video messages to engage in political promotion or solicitation during school hours. Okay, we can't control when they have a radio commercial. I think that means that while they are at work, during hours they should be spending working, they should not be actively engaging in that activity. So for example, if they are at work, they shouldn't go on YouTube or Facebook and post something while at work. I th I I understand, I understand the point of it, but it, it read to me that you, you couldn't have an audio message going out there or a video message or in other places there, t school board has TV commercials, which would be, vid would be video. So that's just how I read it was that it, it um, if that played d during school hours, that, that wouldn't be allowed. Okay. I think playing during school hours is okay, but the filming of it during school hours in the classroom at the school is prohibited. I guess that, if, I think I understand what Collier is saying. In other words, if, if the class is listening to something on the radio and a political message comes on that radio station, that's not something that the employee can control. Exactly. So we're not in a violation there. No, okay, sir. or if it's a television program that they're watching and there's a political ad on the screen, that's that's not a violation. Correct. Right? Correct. That's what you were talking about? I would say uh, um, <coughs> that, and then also if the employee were running for office, they could still buy ad, space, ad time during the school day. They doesn't mean that they yeah. recorded the time during the school day. It just meant that it played at that point. Right, but if it's so. played like on a uh, commercial video type thing, what I'm talking about, like public radio or television, even if, if I purchase the ad and it plays on the radio while the class is listening to some program on the radio, that's not a violation on my part. Because I have no control of that. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Maybe we should use the word shall not produce okay. audio or video. Yeah, there you go. Okay. During you know, during the school time. I don't no, I agree with that. That that probably would yeah. Would Employees shall not produce mm -hmm. audio or video messages yes. during school hours. Mr. Barrett? And I mentioned this last time we read this one because we deferred it, but the social media sites, you know, for example, someone could go on the Mercer Hill City Schools Facebook page and put in the comments, vote for, vote for me and their employee of the district. Right now, they wouldn't be able to, they'd still be able to do that, so I'd like to see the social media added. Add that they cannot? They can, yeah, they can. I would, you know, I Ms. Rainier? Um, Ms. Baker, what the, the very last um, sentence or so that you were talking about the decals and whatever could still be on a person's car, wouldn't it be wise to put that right into the policy? I can. I, I, that would be my choice, I think. And the other thing we were talking about, a decal, <coughs> whatever the second one was. Bumper would, stickers. Bumper sticker, sorry. Um, you know, nowadays people ride around with those big magnet, excuse me, <laughs> magnetic signs on their cars. It, that would be precluded. That may be couched as a decal. I would think. That's so. what I would think. Uh, okay. Now, the one that is questionable is when people put those large 
yes, yeah. signs in the back of the Sign truck or whatever. So, yeah. Right. That's what's questionable. Okay. Seems kind of unusual that an employee can't do that, but if John Q. Public is running for office, he can park his truck with a four by eight piece of plywood with his name on it. Mr. King. Do we need to add email anywhere in this policy? I mean, we know we've talked about audio and video, but. Line six. Right, email accounts. Good email line accounts, six, line six. Email okay. accounts. So email's included, okay. okay. Should we defer this in, uh, for the next time since we're adding all this to it? Second is this reading? first or second? It's our first reading. This is first yeah. reading. Yeah, we deferred it already. So yeah, I'd say we deferred it. This is first reading, so. So y'all want to pass it on first reading or? Yeah. We could pass it with the changes that have been made, mentioned. Okay. And then when it comes back on second reading, we can pass it as it is when we look at it on second reading. Okay. All right, all those in favor of passing uh, 5.606 on first reading as amended, please say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Did we have a motion on that? We didn't. Oh, didn't we? I'm no, sorry. I, I thought that. we did. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, it was a get that uh, <laughs> vote then. <laughs> We just fixed it. Huh? I, I, I so moved it and call your second it. You still got to vote. Okay. I, got it. I thought we did too. Okay. Girls. We'll get it. All right. <laughs> okay. Go to the policies of the second reading. Yes, sir. 5.310 vacation and holidays. I don't think we had any changes on this policy. I recommend approval for second reading. I have a motion to approve. I have a question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Settles. <clears throat> and this is probably covered somewhere else, but the only thing that stuck out to me was depending on the length of an employee's contract. Is that going to be spelled out somewhere else? Or we're just going to say depending on the length of the employee's contract, paid holidays for employees of the district are? Mr. Settles, what that's referring to is if they're on a 10-month contract or, 12. or 11 month or 12 month. Yes, sir. I understand. Thank you. And that's noted in the particular holidays. That Ms. Rainier? Um I had a question basically for Dr. Gilbert because I haven't looked all the way through it, but you probably know since Good Friday is considered a holiday and spring break was included, includes Good Friday, did that count, you know, when you're counting your calendar days? Well, I will look it up right now, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Um, you can let us know later. Okay, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. I'm gonna get it again. Because I'm not seeing it. Right, I'll, I'll have to look it up and see when Good Friday falls. And I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> right, any other questions on policy 5.310, vacations and holidays? Is this second reading? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. All these are on second reading. Do I have a motion to approve on second reading? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. The next policy is acquired immune deficiency syndrome, HIV, AIDS, 5.401. We just added HIV to the title of the policy. I recommend approval for second reading. <coughs> no, that's grievous. That's not a grievous. Hepatitis B. Mr. King? I, I noticed in a line 19, it says this information cannot be faxed. Uh, do we need to add that this email, that this cannot be faxed or emailed? I imagine the fax is to keep you from sending it to a fax machine and it laying open for someone to see. Mm -hmm. But I mean, and, and the, I mean, it's is, about okay. patient confidentiality. I mean, that's what I was thinking. What do you think, Ms. Baker? Uh, I think now emails can, attachments and information can be secured. Okay. Um, 
and sometimes <coughs> encrypted. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to add something that they have to be secure emails so that there's a little bit more caution taken when emailing that and type of information. Use a generic mm -hmm. email address or system. Use your Equifax email address. Oh, my. It's a joke, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Saddle, I have a question, and I'm not I'm not familiar. Do we already have a HIPAA policy? Yes. Yes. Because if we already have a HIPAA policy, that's probably covered. Well, I don't know that. I'm just thinking. HIPAA. HIPAA. The law covers the actual um, physicians, the providers of health care, and the providers of insurance. Mm -hmm and um, third parties that assist with that. It doesn't technically, it wouldn't technically cover the employer necessarily. But we don't have our own policy as we, related to HIPAA, is my question. We have policies rel relative to confidentiality and any medical records that maybe our school nurses generate, but not relative to employees because we aren't covered by HIPAA as an employer. We, we don't fall into one of those three um, categories covered by HIPAA. Ms. Vernier. I have a question on um, lines nine through 12, where it talks about we could not require an, an employee to go under the HIV antibody test or the other tests related, but then it says it does not preclude school officials from requiring an employee to undergo an examination when another communicable illness is suspected. I'm a little unclear as to what that means and who, who or why we would expect mm -hmm. someone else to be tested for our benefit. What state law? Yeah, there's a state law that anyone that is works in a school system has to be free of a communicable disease. Mm -hmm. And those are such as tuberculosis, uh, other diseases that are highly contagious in, in a close-knit setting like a school. So under state law, we are required to, when it's brought to our attention, to me make sure they're free of that disease before they are in an okay. area they could expose others. I just couldn't imagine why we were asking someone, but that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to approve 5.401? So move. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Then there is none. Thank you. Next policy is hepatitis B, HBV 5.402. In lines 10 and 11, we added such training shall be offered upon initial hiring and at least annually thereafter. And in lines 24, 25, 26, we've added some specific language, comprehensive development teachers, comprehensive development education assistants, and the primary providers of first aid in each school office. Uh, these are the individuals who uh, would be offered the vaccinations uh, because of their occupation. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. And that's taken directly from the previous policy, the old yes. policy. Yes, I have a motion to approve 5.402, hepatitis B. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. King. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next policy is discrimination, harassment of employees, uh, 5.500. In line 16, we added the words, the word alleged in two different places on that same line. Mm -hmm. Instead of we did have just the is the offending party, and we it was very wisely suggested adding the word alleged. That's the only change we made on this policy. I recommend approval for second reading. Move for approval. Wait. Mr. Ballard moves for approval. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Barrett seconds. Now, Ms. Rainier. Well, I, my computer closed out of e meetings. So I'm sorry. I just wanted to peek at my notes real quick. I'm so sorry. This is five five zero zero. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Oh, my question was: We do have a separate policy or administrative directive for this situation for our students as well, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's what I thought. <coughs> Good. Any other questions? 
All in favor of passage of 5.500 on second reading, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next policy is complaints and grievances, 5.501. We moved uh, pointing on line 14, 15, 16, 17. We moved that section uh, up to, this, uh, to be the second section, appointing complaint manager so uh, individuals will know immediately who to contact. And it said the director of school shall appoint at least two complaint managers, one of each gender. Uh, and then on lines 19, we added in a timely manner. And then on line 11 on the second page, we made it within five days instead of 10 days to state exactly what our MOU with uh, the MEA states. And then the board chair, we changed that, that on line 13, added the board chair. I recommend approval for second reading. All right, question, Mr. Barrett. After reading this again, line seven through 22 on page two, and the policy addresses if an allegation is against the director of schools and the complaint report goes to our board chair, which I agree with. But what in the following sections, it addresses if a report is filed with the director, but it doesn't highlight what happens if we file it with our board chair. So is it the same procedures or is it handled differently? I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Not that I'm saying, you know, we have a wonderful director, nothing that ever happened. But. I would assume it would be the same time frame if it was filed with the director or with the board chair. Am I correct? Yeah, it's the same time frames, it just, you would replace the board chair for the director mm -hmm. at that point. It, it kind of will take out one step, but okay. it'll go straight to the board as posted through the director. Ms. Rainier? I'm a little confused about lines on the first page, lines 16 and 17 where it says it was moved from the end of the policy to here. So this that's in red and it's been struck through, right. it is being included or it is not being included here? The change was because in the, previously when we read this policy, it said the assistant superintendent of human resources and special ed director shall serve as complaint managers. Uh, in fact, in the other, when we went through the policy the first time, those two people were named. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so we, we we changed that to say uh, two complaint managers, one of each gender. Okay, so the red is removed then? Yes, yes. Okay, and, and then. Um, that was at the end of the policy, so it was moved <coughs> up to there. Okay, and then on the um, lines, tw uh, it might be the second page, let me see. Lines 21 <coughs> and 22. Oh, oh, yes. The procedure shall not be construed to create an independent right to a board hearing. Is that written as it is just so that the complainant doesn't automatically think it goes straight to the board? Okay. Thank you. Mr. King. I'm gonna go back to Ms. Rainier with the same page one, the lines 15 through 17. I know there was some discussion at the last meeting, you know, about the, the portion in red that's been removed and, and, and you were saying that um, during training you had a presentation where you spelled out how those two managers or those two people or positions were. Yes. And I just thought should we just put a, a a generic sentence in here that it, at least annually during training, the teachers, employees would be informed who those people would be. I like that. Yeah, yeah I would, and, and I'd like to, if we could be informed annually, I don't think it just needs to be in training. I think we need to have it in AD or, or on the website. Do okay. we have a handbook for the, so that's where it should be. Yes, mm -hmm. We'll just say that it's, okay. it's provided. It's on the website, in the, yeah. In the handbook. Yes. We have one question that I'll have. This policy and other policies, when we get the final approval, second reading and they're redone or however, uh, the lineage will go consistently, like we won't have a page two line one through 
22, it'll just be 31 <coughs> through 52 or whatever. Is that right? Correct. Okay, thank you. I knew we had discussed that earlier. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve the policy. Move to approve. Okay, as amended. Uh, yes, as okay. amended. Mr. Ballard did and Second. Second, Ms. Smith. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Thank you. The next policy is staff rights <coughs> and responsibilities 5.600. As you can see on the lines 1 through 12, we included the language from our existing policy, PER 6. And that's a, that was a very good wordage right there. And then uh, we went with TSBA's recommendation for the remainder of the policy. I recommend approval for second reading. I have a motion to approve on second reading. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. I have a second. Second. Mr. Kimney, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, line 29, we have guidelines in the handbook, I'm assuming, for appropriate dress. <laughs> Mr. Campbell, <laughs> we could have gone all night without <laughs> addressing this. Mm. Uh, wow. <laughs> Face is getting red. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> have you been violating the dress code? Uh -uh. I think we have. <laughs> we I've are opposed to about blue about shirts and ties. Well, we can talk to this uh, in private if you think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is pretty vague right now. This is about as specific as we get on this. Uh, if you ask me my personal opinion, we probably need to revisit this and be a little bit more specific. Um, but I think aspect. that, Ralph, I'd rather get with the principals on that and put okay. it in an AD. Sounds good to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to have to experience this again. <laughs> well, is it not, um, is it, is it? Uh, a problem? No, I mean, I, I mean, I hear things, but, <laughs> but it, is it um, system wide or is it by, by building. It's, it's by building. Developed by principals or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, and that's something we probably need to talk about. I don't know that I want to get tremendously specific with that, but I think that, that there are appropriate guidelines. I mean, I think there, there are things that you don't, you don't want to detract from student learning. And, and you, so I think the guidelines would be very similar to what you would find about a lot of other guidelines. It has to do with the impact on student learning, the impact on distraction. But we, we need to talk about that with principals, okay. I think. And I think we need to talk about that as far as student dress too. But that, that has been always left up to principals. All right, Ms. Smith. The main thing is that you don't want the adults violating the student dress code. I agree. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> At the very minimum. <laughs> At the very least. Dr. Gilbert hit the distraction. You don't want to distract the learning environment. Right. That is correct. Mr. Ballard. So is it in the <coughs> um, student ha the handbook, that the, or the parent handbook that goes it, out to each? Does, is there a mention of dress code? It would be, yes. In each school, they would have, and I'm assuming that they have in each handbook, Joe, Jean, thank you. Uh, they address they address dress code in in the handbooks and in individual handbooks. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with you. We need to discuss it some more because, as an admit administrator or a teacher, I think they need better protection with the guidelines as to what to do in case somebody steps outside of whatever the perceived guidelines are. You need something to back that up. You can't just decide it's Tuesday. You're not going to wear, you know your shirt inside out. Right. Yeah. We have a motion to approve it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Rainier. Uh, you know me, I've got all these questions. Um, line 17 and 18, <coughs> academic freedom within the confines of state law and board policy in order to create an atmosphere of freedom in the classroom, that this is a right of each staff member. So I have a question about that because several years ago, let's just take math mapping. I was told that teachers 
and it may not have been in every building, it may have been a principal decision that every teacher in third grade had to be on a specific skill, a specific page in the book, every, every day they had to move along together. And knowing what we know, not, not all children are ready to make that move. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's still That hasn't issue. been that way since January of 2010, I know. Uh, <laughs> now, what we do have is a scope and se sequence that has been developed by teachers, and so they're gonna be followed, but it's not, no, we do not have on this page, on this day. Within reason, there is that, but that scope and sequence was developed really by teachers, for teachers, so that they would know what would be reasonable. Because Maybe. sometimes it's terribly difficult when you have this much material to cover over a year. It's very easy if you don't have that scope and sequence or some kind mm -hmm. of benchmarks there to, to know where you have to be. Well, and also you're saying that cover this much in a year, we know that we have to cover it in That's right. basically three quarters of a year, so That's that right. makes it difficult. Um, and then it talks somewhere in here about the teacher code, oh, number two on line 22, the teacher code of ethics. Are they giving that, given that in the handbook? Cause I printed it and it's pretty lengthy. Yeah, it is. Um, and I was thinking back to my years and I don't think anybody ever gave me the te teacher code of ethics. I don't, I don't know whether we give that to them or not. It's certainly referenced here as far as, you know, Yes, it is, but I, I'll, I'll make sure that it is in our teacher handbook. Teacher handbook would be great. Good. Perfect, thank you. That's all I needed. All right, any other discussion? Question. Yes, ma'am. Are the names of the board members and the our phone numbers in the teacher handbook? No, ma'am. I don't. That'd think be nice. So. Okay. Mm. Thank you. An email address. And some of the rest of you will get called. I have a motion to approve 5.600. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Second. Thank you, Mr. Settles. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none, thank you. Thank you. Next board policy is conflict of interest, 5.601 on line 27. We added, if there is a question about conflict of interest, employees should contact the, the director of schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and I recommend approval for second reading. So moved. Okay, have a second. Second. Uh, any discussion or question? I've got one, if you'll just hold on a minute and I go back. <laughs> Line five, page one. It talks about principal, teacher, or other school administrative employee. Now, does that include also people other than the principal or teacher or school administrative? By school administrative employee, does that mean everybody? <coughs> All employees, cafeteria, custodian, educational assistants. I'm, I'm the school administrative employee. Like I think the administrator is correct in their okay, family. So, so we're talking then about family member of a principal or a teacher. Yes, sir. Okay. Do we need to add or not? That's my question. I don't uh, think so. It, it, the line above it says, however, a spouse or family, oh, it says may participate. Okay. Uh, what would we add, change the, to the, this? The, I don't think there's any need to add other employees outside of the administrative supervisory employees because if you notice, the first sentence is making the prohibition just related to administrative and supervisory employees because they have a role in that decision-making process of awarding bids and selecting products. Now, other employees that aren't involved in that process, the law doesn't put that restriction necessarily directly on them. Okay, so, um, so that's why it's worded the way that it is. It, it, the law focuses on individuals that have some sort of decision-making authority. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, do we uh, we have a motion to approve 5.601? So moved. Thank you, Mr. King. Second. Mr. Barrett, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Thank you. Next policy is staff time schedules 5.602. Uh, this policy is basically 
verbatim the Federal Labor and Standards Act. Um, I recommend approval for second reading. Ms. Rainier? I was a little confused about this. Did you discuss this the last time or? We did. Okay. So on um, three and four, we know that, I remember before we talked about the number of minutes as opposed to the number of hours in the day. So we have that seven hours and 30 minutes will be the their work day. And then when we get to line um, three and four, they'll continue until professional responsibilities to the student and the school are completed. In my mind, that sounds like we're saying you have to stay there until you finish everything that you're responsible for. And I don't know that we can say you have to stay, like you have to stay after school today and finish this. So line two that's states a minimum. Pardon me? Line two states a minimum. Okay. The minimum, well, but again, if that's the minimum, why are we, do you see what I'm saying? Because it says the employee will continue until the responsibilities <coughs> to the student and school are completed. So if I have a mound of papers to grade, are we saying you can't go home and grade those at home? You have to stay right there. That's what confuses me. I think that it's a little iffy mm -hmm. there. Now, on lines six and seven, it says when the school has activities beyond your school day and teacher participation needs, these hours be distributed as e equitably as possible among the faculty. That's in the MOU as well. Right. Um, if they have a basketball game or spring fling, uh, teachers sign up sometimes. Right. We work ball games. And but then lines two and three, is that it? Two, three, four, is that in the MOU? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm surprised. Um, let's see. <laughs> I think basically it's it's simply defining the work schedule of seven hours and 30 minutes a day. I don't I don't think the professional responsibilities would would include grading papers and doing bulletin boards and things along that line where you you can require that teacher to stay. <coughs> Uh, well, Any uh, other question or discussion? That's that's how I read it, is that it's a minimum of 7.5, and if there's something that goes over, I think, and when it picks back up, when it says about the school activities and beyond uh, the school day, I pick that up to, to mean the continuation of that 7.5. That's where it starts, and it can go on or beyond that just so that we don't get locked into saying it's 7.5 and I'm done. We all know that 99% of our teachers work more than right. seven and a half hours yeah. a day. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it just seems, I just, maybe I'm just reading it wrong. It just seems to me we're saying that you have to stay there till that whatever's completed. In line nine, what does the state tell us we have to give us planning time? Exactly what this policy states, two minutes? and a half hours. 30 minutes two, a day. Two and a half hours a week. Okay, I was thinking it was 45. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm good. It, Maybe 45 for middle school and secondary. Maybe. We, what you're seeing there is the minimums that we always, we're going 45 minutes a day, so that's, that's where I you're thought. getting the 45. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Smith? Just for consistency, line 16, director of schools needs to be capped. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Ah, it's actually, um, on line 25 as well. All right, any other questions on policy 5.602 staff time schedules? If not, do we have a motion to approve? So move, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Mr. Settles. Have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next board policy is staff meetings, 5.603.
The first nine lines are the TSBA recommendation. The 10 through 19 is exactly what we had in board policy PER1. We just combine those two. They, uh, I enjoy, I love the wordage in both. So I recommend, I recommend, I recommend approval on second reading. Do we have a motion to approve staff meetings policy 5.603 on second reading? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Vernier. Have a second? Second. second. Thank you, Mr. King. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Thank you. Next policy is staff gifts and solicitations, 5.605. The only change that we have from the first reading to second reading is lines 16 through 18. We added those. This policy <coughs> shall not apply to legitimate campaign contributions, which are properly reported in accordance with the state of Tennessee election laws when the Murfreesboro City School System employee or representative is a candidate for public office. We recommend approval for second reading. Mr. Barrett, you brought this to our attention at our last meeting. Do you have any questions pertaining to this? Well, I read it on second reading, of course, and after reading, I was like, do we want to move that up to under gifts instead of solicitations? But I'm fine with it where it is after reading it now. Okay. But. All right, do we have a motion to approve the policy as written? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Have a second? Second. Mr. Ballard, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you. Thank you. We have our last board policy for second reading tonight, Director of Schools, 5.0. <laughs> Eight zero zero, we added lines six and seven from the first reading to the second reading. Uh, lines five it says the direct the director of schools at their discretion may delegate any of their duties to other school personnel. However, that delegation of duties shall not relieve the director of the responsibility for the action taken under such delegation. We recommend approval for second reading. So moved. Mr. Ballard moves to approve on second reading. Have a second. Second. Mr. Settle, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Ring staff. We appreciate Good it. Good job. <laughs> All right. Reports and information. Mr. Anderson. <coughs> uh, you have your financial report in there for the first two months of this school year. It's a 16.7% time. Uh, last year at this time, we were $1,288,596 uh, in the red. That's a $381,000 difference from where we are today. Uh, on the revenue side, we're exactly the same percentage at 8.2%. The only thing that gives me a little pause is that our local option sales tax number is flat. It did not grow any. That makes me be a little bit uh, Leary, so I'll be watching that number real carefully. Uh, the rest of the numbers are just normal, the way they would normally flow in. Uh, and as always, at this time, we don't have any property tax until later in the uh, fiscal year. On the expenditure side, we're up in expenditures uh, three tenths of one percent. A lot of that is the front end loading of getting the school year started with software, with buying items to bring online uh, to get, just to get us going um, I said I'll be glad to answer any questions you have on any of the categories any questions on expenditure and revenue report mr. King not a question but the same observations you did on the sales tax I noticed that as well uh, the other, only other question I got would be on the expenditure report be line 9 item 70 to 250 other support it's uh, last year was 20.3 percent this time it's 25.7 does that other support uh, was what you were talking about bringing other things items on yes on that particular line the uh, Cisco smart net increased by twenty four thousand dollars <coughs> that's part of our infrastructure okay. the uh, VM updates and support increased by seven thousand and online training for PD increase by 10,000. So all of those things, yes, they all add up and they're all on the front end of the. Of the I just noticed that was the only one with the yes. large increase, yes. so to speak. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other business to come before the board? Can you give us an update on Black Fox? Anything changed different? Uh, the, I understand the light is up in the parking lot now. Uh, we're still waiting on getting the new lake taken care of. I think the geese have a big enough lake on the other side of the road, so we want to get that taken care of. Other than that, they're doing their, their closeout procedures, but they're not done. they got a year to finish all those things, so we'll keep, keep an eye on them. There's nothing, nothing big to report. Okay. Ms. Smith? I'd like a copy of the letter that we've all signed um, with our dis displeasure um, with the test scores not being uh, returned to us to go be added to the minutes. Okay. Okay, good idea. Mr. King? Am I correct that uh, Candace McQueen will be in Smyrna Thursday, this Thursday at Rotary? Did I got that right? I thought that was, um, I didn't get Candace McQueen. Beth I, Harwell's going to no, I didn't see no. that. No. Okay. But Beth Harwell, but then okay. when I read it, it didn't say Beth Harwell. It said somebody else. I can't remember. Yeah. You know, Maybe the, she's uh, coming with Harwell. But somebody important. Double your money. It is somebody this Thursday at Smyrna <laughs> Rotary. Yes, at the Rotary, and there's, there's an all-day. And then touring something. It's Beth, and Lisa just handed yeah, okay. it to us. Yeah, Beth okay. one's yeah. going to be there. Yes. Okay, I'm my bad. All right, anything else to come before this board tonight? If not, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. We have a second? Second. All in favor, good night. Good night. <laughs>